It's me, Joku. I'm back, and I know what you're think. I know exactly what you're thinking, Joku. How in the world did you get so tan? Well, the answer is, last week I was on a tropical vacation. That's right. I went to the tropical, so my hair is has gone fully tropical. And I actually really like playing One Piece cards. I know you usually come here for Shrippums, but today I'm doing a deck profile on ST10 Luffy. I've been having a lot of fun playing ST10 Luffy, and I made this leader card that you can flip when you use your leader effect to remember that you did your leader effect to go from this cool egghead Luffy by Uchiha Jake to this UI Luffy by HZ19. So I'm gonna go through a deck profile. A lot of the cards in this deck, or some of them, are proxies that I made. They are not for sale. They are, you know, made by me. I, I love this game, I love the art in this game, so I'm excited to show them off, but they're not really available for sale. I just make them for myself. Anyway, with all that being said, let's get into this thing. So I have this problem in the One Piece card game. Um, this is my deck box. I made the World Championship alternate art color Luffy because I like these colors. Um, I love the One Piece card game, but I can really only play Luffy leaders. So I don't know why, but I just love playing Luffy leaders. It's my favorite. Uh, so I, if you don't know how this leader works, basically you can get an extra Dawn when you're at zero Dawn or when you're at eight or more Dawn. So the idea is you kind of ramp up and then you get to 10 really fast and then you use minus effects. So I built this deck a little differently. Um, here's my Dawn deck. This is my favorite Dawn deck. As you can see, it matches my playmat, Art by HZ19. And I'm going to go through the deck just card by card and talk about the cards. So first and foremost, we have our main man, Bentham. Bentham is amazing. I love this card. It's really great when you can just slam it down, get a ramp, and then they get punished for playing a bomb, basically. So I'm playing two of the regular Benthams and two of the alternate Art Benthams, of course. So basically the way this card works is you play it. The next turn, any of their characters, you can choose that character. This card will gain that character's power and then you can attack for it. And when you play this card, you get a Dawn and active. So it's a really, really good effect. Very strong card, very useful body. Um, somewhat easy to remove because only a thousand power. So those cards that just kind of get rid of it, but they have to do that, right? So four of these, and then I'm just gonna go right into the counter card. So. I have four radical beams. This is a red purple leader and you start at three life. So you go to two really fast. So this card becomes live almost immediately. I don't play many two Ks in the deck. So I have a lot of counter cards. I didn't get the uh, limited collection blast breaths yet. They're in the mail and mine are on their way to me also. So sorry, I don't have the super shiny version, but two of these just because Dawn minusing doesn't matter that much. You get Dawn back so fast. And then I'm playing four of the zero cost event. This is good because there are a lot of dead cards in the deck. So this kind of turns those into counter power. When you have cards in hand and you need to counter, you can use this. And if you see this out of your life for the first or second life, you can trigger the effect to gain a Dawn, which is pretty good to help you ramp. Um, I put two of these in Fire Fist because you're usually at two life in this deck pretty quickly. So this is live um, really fast and it allows you to remove a zero cost card. So if you can neg something down and then use this, it's good for removal, especially for Rebecca's in the Sakazuki matchup. This is really great for minusing a Luchi, then you can swing into it and then getting rid of Rebecca. Um, I'm also playing four of the Otamas. Otama is just, this is good for the 2K and you may use the minus effect here and there, but really it's mainly the really pretty 2K. So I like this card a lot. And then in this deck, the idea is that I'm playing a lot of tall blockers. So five cost blockers. Establishing a kid early on is very, very strong because there's a lot of Dawn minus effects. So if you can get two of these guys to stick, you're really, really gaining a lot of value over the course of the game and we'll get to why. But if you can establish this kid before you play queen, it's really great because the queen minus, you just get the Dawn back from kid. And if you happen to have two kids out and you Dawn minus for queen, all of a sudden you're gonna be at 10 Dawn, which is really, really good. So being able to get one or two of these out, basically his effect is when you Dawn minus, you get a Dawn back in active mode. It's really strong. He's a five, cost blocker so stuff like amaru doesn't rest it and it's a little harder to remove um of course you know that like blue tiger blade or whatever will just get rid of these unfortunately but really great blocker and then 
We also play queen, four queens. This one I made, this is a Kaizoku card, Mongo Queen. I play four of these just because it really helps to draw cards. The deck doesn't really draw cards on its own, so queen is great for drawing cards. And you wanna have Dawn minus of X. So if you have a kid out and on your turn, when you have 10 Dawn, you play, in, you play a, a queen, Dawn minus, you get that Dawn back right away. And then um, you're just playing like an 11 Dawn turn basically. So you can actually play this and a six Dawn card in one turn, which is really valuable. And you're drawing cards, so you're filtering your deck and another five cost blocker, so a little harder to get rid of. And then of course, Shovel Man. I, you know, I'm playing the version that doesn't have the shovel because it's a little shinier, but this guy is insane. So basically what this blocker does is he gains the power of your opponent's leader on block or on attack, which is very, very strong in this meta, especially with stuff like ST13 Luffy running around or any of the ST13 leaders that buff. He becomes a really easy block for those, and he also can swing into those easily. So really, really, really strong card. He does get rested off Amaru, of but it's just really good. Then I play two choppers. I play the one manga because I actually really like this art a lot. So I like this art, but choppers, a 1K counter, that's great. But his effect sometimes does get in there, especially when you're using Fire Fist. So if you put the two Dawn on chopper, minus something down and then play Fire Fist, you can remove some bigger bodies, which is I think useful. Um, so chopper does get in there and just you want to have blockers because you're gonna be at zero life pretty quickly And you kind of need to like hang out behind blockers to stay alive That's part of how it goes and then I'm playing three of these um, Laws these are the law blockers This just kind of forces your opponent to use their cards as soon as they go to seven cards in hand If you play this ripping two cards out of hand is very very devastating especially if they're at nine and you have two of these in hand you can rip them down to five cards which is really really unfortunate for them and you're establishing two blockers on top of that and if you have a kid you're gaining more dawn to keep dawn up for your counter so really really valuable card in this deck i'm playing three king is really really good so i call this the boss monster build of this basically the rest of these cards are just boss monsters king is great for removal um, and when you do your Dawn minus effect and you have a kid on board, you're getting that Dawn back. So you can often, you can actually play King and a Queen in the same turn, or you can play a, a King and a, um, and a, a kid in the same turn, especially even if you don't have the kid, you can still Queen or play King on 10 Dawn, Dawn minus, use your leader effect, get the Dawn back. And then you have six dawn to play with again so really really good card in this deck and then i am playing two of these kids the big kid this is really good because it buffs your leader so you hanging out at seven is really good you're a six base so going to seven is really strong and having a big body on board that they just they kind of have to answer this the longer this chills the more value you get out of it especially if you have a kid blocker on board every turn you're dawn minus and you're just getting that dawn back so it's really good because you can you know, you can play this, Dawn minus, get the Dawn back, just a lot of shenanigans. Um, and then of course, Whitebeard, I'm playing three because I'm playing a bunch of other boss monsters. So everybody knows this card is insane. He makes your leader an 8K. So if you have this and a kid on board, your leader all of a sudden is a 9K leader base, which is a lot harder to swing over. Um, and you can remove stuff with him. So if you have a chopper on board and this, one turn you can minus a blocker, swing with chopper, and then just pop the blocker with this. Or you can fire fist, swing with this, pop that. So a lot, a lot of value out of Whitebeard in this deck. And then I'm also playing three Kaido. So I don't see many lists playing Kaido, but Kaido is really good with the kid blocker because if you have two kid blockers on board and you Dawn minus five off Kaido, all of a sudden you get two Dawn back and you just spent nine Dawn but you're back to three active Dawn, which is really strong because then you could play a Shiraya, you can keep uh, Dawn up for countering. There's just, there's a lot that you can do with this. So really, really strong card, removes a six cost or less and has rush. So I think this card is crazy in this deck. I have the one winner, so I play the one winner. And then of course the 10 cost Luffy, this is the world champ. I'm gonna just take one out because it looks so good. So I made this, but this card is wild. 
if you set up a board of blockers, which is very possible, you know, you can get five characters out and just have them chilling. And then you swing, 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 play the Luffy, Dom minus 10, send everything to the bottom. And then if your leader has already been buffed, you can then do your leader effect, get the Dawn back because you're at zero, pay for Luffy's ability, get another Dawn, swing for seven with your leader, start another turn, immediately go back to four, pay Luffy's effect, go to five Dawn, swing with your leader for 10, swing with Luffy for 12, usually for game, or just keep that Dawn up to counter to try and live if you can. Um, just such a fun and cool card to play, but this is like a finisher. You're probably not gonna play this more than once. So I just have three. A lot of times you're discarding this off of your uh, zero cost event because you just need the one to hopefully close out the game. So that is the deck. That's the deck profile. I used some sleeves I made also with some Phantom Arts art. Um, I've been having a lot of fun playing this. Obviously Sakazuki is a really tough matchup because they just remove everything. But I feel like the deck can kind of hang now, especially because of cards like Shiraya and Bon Clay, Bentham. You just have some really, really valuable cards in here. Chopper also adds some value, but there's gonna be some more um, value cards coming in set seven that will make this deck, I think, even more playable. But of course, if you have this leader and you can just go Ultra Instinct mode, UI Luffy, who can beat that? Anyway, that's my Luffy deck profile. If you gotta enjoy this, please let me know. I'd be happy to do more deck profiles. I do love playing the game, but I spend so much time stripping and designing cards that I don't get to do that many deck profiles that often, but I would happy, happily do some more Luffy deck profiles. I was actually looking for an ST10 EB support Luffy deck profile and I couldn't find one. So I was like, all right, I'm just gonna brew my own thing and I'll make a video. So I hope you all enjoyed this. I am a dentist. I can't end without a dental tooth tip. My dental tooth tip to you would be, you know, actually I'm gonna go a little in depth on this one. So usually when you go to the dentist, they tell you to floss. I'm the kind of guy that doesn't like to listen to people just telling me to do stuff. So I like to explain why it's important to floss. It's not just about getting stuff out from between your teeth, but there's a little space between your gum tissue and your tooth that has a little pocket. And when stuff gets down there and attracts bacteria, the bacteria produce acid and the acid break down that tissue connection, giving the acid a way to get down to the bone level and they can start reducing the bone height, which reduces the support that your teeth have in your jaw. So over time, it's more likely that you lose teeth when you lose the bone support for them. So cleaning between your teeth is important so you maintain that tissue connection and keep the bone support for your teeth. So figure out some good flossing method. You can use a water flosser, shower flosser, Listerine Ultra Clean is the one that I recommend, but whatever it is, try and use it. Keep those spaces clean. Thanks for checking it out. Oh yeah, and this leader is gonna be on sale today. So if you wanna pick up this leader, go check out Kaizoku Cards. It does help me continue to shrip them here. So this will be available. It's my first dual-sided leader on the newly revamped Kaizoku Cards. So please check it out and thanks for coming by. Thank you.